last Sunday I was driving to church in the morning for first service. I asked the Father, I said, Father's Day is coming, what, what do you want to do? And I heard him say, before I could even have a chance to think about it myself, he said, I want to, give the, I want to release my, the Father's blessing. Then I saw immediately a picture of, of the Father blessing of Jesus and the Holy Spirit coming. The Holy Spirit came, and then the Father affirmed his, his identity, his sonship. And I saw the Father wanting to release a, a, an out, and a fresh baptism, a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit to each and every one of us here, online, wherever we hear this at a later date. And with the, with the new infilling, a refilling of the Holy Spirit, would come the sound and the voice of the Father affirming our identity in Christ. The Holy Spirit come, we, under, we then hear our identity in Christ. That releases the Abba. I saw then at the end of the service, which we'll do today at about 9, 10, or about 10, 10, we'll, we'll designate the dance floor over for a ministry area. I saw men here who are, carry a Father's heart, who are full of the Spirit, to release that blessing to any and everyone who'd like that. But I also saw that it wasn't mandatory to have hands laid on you to receive the Father's blessing because the Father himself is going to pour out of his spirit afresh and his voice could be heard just in your own place you're at. So it's not necessary one way or the other, but what is necessary is faith. Because without faith, not only does it not please the Father, but we can't receive the Holy Spirit. We receive the Holy Spirit because we hear with faith, not because we worked our way there. And so today I'm going to ask you to listen as though this is the first time you've heard this. You may have heard it many, many times. You may, you know, but if the problem about hearing, if you've heard it, then you don't hear it. And faith does not come from having heard it. Faith comes from hearing it. So it's that moment you hear it, it becomes alive again, a life again. And that's why whenever I'm in worship, whenever I'm in prayer, even right just a moment ago while we were in announcements and Christy is sharing, I'm listening to hear because when I hear, I never know where I'm going to hear the Father speak or where Jesus is going to speak to me. But when I do, faith comes. And when faith comes, the Holy Spirit comes. And when the Holy Spirit comes, power comes. And I don't know about you, but I'm always looking for more power just to hold myself in my place that God asked me to and go forward in the thing he's trying to do. So uh, let's see, Matthew, uh, do we have that up? I'll, I'm going to just go back. Matthew 3.13. You're familiar with the story. And he went up. Matthew, you're on Mark, Sam. Matthew, okay. So uh, that's a good, good verse too. <laughs> Whenever, uh, that, once we get it up there, oh, I can pull it up in my Bible. I can you still flip pages. Jesus. There it is. Thank you. So Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. That was a couple day journey out of his region where he lived. And John tried to prevent him saying, I need to be baptized by you. Are you coming to me? And Jesus answered and said to him, permit it to be so now. For thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. There's so much of, of that in Christ and sonship and submission and coming under and hearing and partnership. But let's go on. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. I love that, to him. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Let's go to Mark 3, because I want to talk about that for a moment. But I also want you to see something. Here, Father makes an announcement and is recorded by Matthew for the benefit of all of us to identify Christ in the Father's heart. This is my beloved Son. It's a statement, it's a directive, it's a, it's a pointing to. This is my beloved son. 
Luke has, I don't know how Luke got this, but Luke has a unique insight into the prayer life of Jesus. We're going to go uh, Luke 3, and we will be in uh, verse 21. And so he often captures for us Jesus in prayer, which is huge because he really did pray a lot because he was just holding this relationship that was his by faith, just like you have to hold your relationship by faith. He had to hold his. So when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus was also baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was opened. The Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved Son, in whom you I am well pleased. Now, what's the difference between the first statement and the other? One is for the benefit of the people outside and the substantiating the person within the midst of the people who he is. Important. This one is a personal sound of intimacy. Prayer releases intimacy. Prayer produces intimacy with the one to whom you pray, the ones for whom you pray, and the ones with whom you pray. It is an unlocking of intimacy. And Jesus is hearing the Father say to him, you are my son. And that is still today the most powerful word you'll ever hear, Father say, you are my son. And I know that this is Father's Day, and we, I'd love to just keep always... I think being a father or being a mother are the hardest jobs in the world, and it's just as Christy said, because we're not perfect. But we try to be perfect, and the harder we try to be perfect, the worse we seem to be. Usually what we do of, 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 of um, mix-ups mix are the efforts of where we try to it's overly hard to be what only Jesus can be. And then we have to disengage later, but by the time we disengage, damage is already done. And so the iniquity passes on. But that's another story. But the Father is perfect. When we sin, I mean, and, you know, to take courage, dads, because the Father, first son, put, he placed him inside a perfect garden with everything. And he chose to rebel and, cho and become a slave for what? For the, for, the, for the lie that he could be God without a father, that he could live an independent life. And thank God the Father didn't just quarantine and shut us down. He went and said, I'm going to find a means I will become man. I will put my seed into a woman. I'll be a man. And then I will take the, bent, I will take the, I will take the punishment, the wrath, the consequence, the sin, and I will dismantle the power of sin to keep anyone in slavery through a sonship again. And I'm going to do it. Oh, thank you, Father. So I think, I think he deserves a good, you know, a good focus mind. If he wants to bless me, I want him to bless me. Some of us are living today still with an, op an empty place in our life because we look to our earthly father to have done something or we wish our heavenly our earthly father would have never done something. And we're still living under the, under the lack of that, the failure of that. And yet I want to say that your father in heaven, in Christ, supersedes all that. Yeah. Takes over beyond that place. And so if we can step there... Who knows what will happen? So Jesus is, hears the words, you are my beloved son. Now, let's go to chapter 4, verse 1. I want you to see this, because for how many, of here, how many here have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior? Hold your hand up and wave at me. All right, whole group. How many on let, online wave at me? Okay, how many have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit since they believed? Wave at me, all right? Okay, all right. So, so I'm not talking to a group that isn't already initiated. So I'm hoping I just can reactivate you because it's sure happening to me. <laughs> Thank you, Father. So Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, he had an event at the Jordan. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. Returned to the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Holy Spirit has a way of doing two things at once. He releases the sound of Abba and he places us in, in, the, in the place of testing. He builds within us an inner, inner witness that gives us a, sur a surety in any place, and he, and he accomplishes it both by the witness within and the circumstances without, and he allows the contradicting circumstances 
to force us or drive us back to union and communion with the truth. And this is Jesus. He does it for us the first time. Keep, keep it up, please. So being tempted by the devil for 40 days, and in those days he ate nothing, and afterwards when he had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command the stone to become bread. The beauty of this going to this te to testing is that you see what the testing was about. The testing was, against the, uh, was after the sonship of Jesus. The identity by faith that Jesus stepped into, by faith to be the Son of God. In John 14, 20, Jesus said, On the day of my resurrection, you'll come to know this, that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. And now you and I practice our life by continuing agreement by faith that we're in Christ. Just like Jesus had to stay in agreement that he was in the Father. You study the Gospels, all accusations that came against Jesus were against his identity as a son. And that was the one thing he would never uh, allow to rest upon him. Because if he broke agreement with, by faith that he was the son of God, he couldn't have gone to the cross by faith as the son of God. And by faith, he offered himself up. Do you understand that? So yeah, that's just my day every day. That's your day. Ours seems to be more convoluted because it seems to be in the mixture of our own experiences, which has enough sin in it that we can blame. We can't really see it as a pure, a pure process. We can think of it as just consequences, and we're not really sure about anything. But I want to say that when you were born again, you were brought into a sonship, and that identity is seen in heaven and recognized by Father and is never in question, no matter how you perform. And the, the real battle is holding agreement with that truth even when, you pull, when, you be, when you perform poorly. And don't go back to try to perform better to gain that place because then you're just a slave. You have to go back to accepting that you were chosen in the Son, are saved, and that this is how you hold your place. And your identity is challenged, like my identity is challenged, about my in Christ relationship that places me as a son. Now, Jesus could have said, hey, dude, I just had the most incredible baptism experience you've ever been to. I was in a meeting that no one else has ever been in. I had the heaven open up over my head. I had the Spirit of God fall it come down in a bodily form. And I heard an audible voice come out of heaven saying, I am the Son of God. Leave me alone. And he would have been plowed over. He would have been plowed over because he would have been using us, an experience of God with the soul of man to try to withstand the accuser who is a master of getting you in a conversation out of your experience. If he can get you into a conversation, he'll soon have you in an argument. If he can get you in an argument, he'll soon have you doubting. If he gets you doubting, he'll soon have you walking away from your treasure. So Jesus does what we're to do. It is written, he says. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of God. Out of, the, out of the word, by every word of God or out of the mouth of God. Well, then the devil taking him up on a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Just saw it. And the devil said to him, all this authority I will give to you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me. Thank you, Adam. And I will give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, I, if you worship before me, I will, it'll be yours. Jesus looks and says, get behind me, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Again, he didn't try to say, wait a minute, I have a higher rank than you do. I'm actually God. I don't need that you be worship you. You're going to have to bow your knee to me. He didn't get into the argument. He just stated truth that he had come to submission to. That's the power of the word, is it's not about what you think about it. It's just what it says about it. And spoken out loud, it will shut down the mouth of hell. It's just powerful. It's just so powerful. So he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on a pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, if you will, the son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written. The devil's trying to get little, you know, get in on this. Okay, you can do it written. I can do the it. It is written. Don't ever think, if ever scripture condemns you, confuses you, shut, just walk away from it for a moment. Chances are it isn't, it isn't 
the breath of God on it right now. Because the scripture will confirm, affirm you in Christ and give you hope and, exper- and expectancy of something churning. Always. It does never condemn you. Though, it, though there's enough scripture in you could read that would be very condemning if you just read it in the natural setting. But in Christ, everything is changed and therefore has to be heard in Christ. So the angel says, well, you, you'll give your angels, he, he says it's written, it's the angels, he'll give angels charge of you to keep you. Well, in their hands, they'll bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. So you can do this, do it, come on, you can do it. God promised he'll take care of you. And Jesus answered, said to, me, said to him, it has been written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. So uh, those three temptations embody all temptations that we face every day. They are the very essence of what was seen in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. They are, Jesus bore them in its entirety and its strength, and he defeated it in the word of God, with the word of God. And therefore, in our sonship, our identity, so much will happen if we have scripture that states for us what we are believing and holding our place in. So when the devil de- ended every temptation, he departed for him uh, forever. <laughs> Sorry, no, for an opportune time until the next moment he could get in. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit, filled with the Spirit of Jordan, led by the Spirit into the wilderness, walks through a test of temptations, fasting, and, and exchange, overwhelms the enemy, not by his holiness, not by his righteousness, not by his pedigree, not by his experience, but just by the word of God. Now he comes back into the land from the Jordan. Now he's back into Galilee, entering into his hometown, and he is full of power, full of the Holy Spirit, led by the Spirit. Now he's in the power of the Spirit because there is a power that we experience in these testings. Even though we'd rather avoid the testing, this is where the power grows. This is how we begin to know that this really works. So go with me now, Sam, to... I think I want to go to... Oh, come on, phone. My thumb. It is the same thumb that was there yesterday. All right, go with me to Acts chapter 1, because we're going to run out of time. I've got more scriptures I'll do next service. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Uh, so Jesus being assembled, uh, hallelujah, thank you, God, for water. Jesus was raised from the dead by this, by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the Father saying, you are my son, today I've begotten you. He was, he was raised from the dead the same way he was called into his sonship on the earth as the firstborn, the only, or as the only begotten. By the same words, you are my son, today I've begotten you. You are my son, today I've begotten you. It is the resurrection word. And the spirit of God was the power of God that raised him up and set him far above everything. How many of us might think that when we are in a pickle or when we've been living in a bad place or stuck in a cave or stuck in a prison or stuck in a loopy loop that we can't get out of, that we're going to come out of that loopy loop by hearing God say to us personally, you're my son. I begot you. And the power of God, because we believe those words, comes alive and we get raised up because we live in the same resurrection life that Christ lives. So Jesus was raised from the dead by the same sound. You are my son. And the spirit of God did the work. The power of God made that happen. So now he's talking to us. Being assembled together with them. This is on the Mount of Olives, 40 days or 10 days before Pentecost. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. He said, you have heard it from me. Wow. A resurrected Christ, 40 days of your own personal conference, And he says, you know what? It's not enough. You're going to need the Holy Spirit. So wait. And it's the promise the Father promised. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Oh, thank you. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, 
will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he answers in two ways. He says in verse 8, uh, verse, no, verse 7, excuse me. It's not for you to know the seasons and the times the Father's put in hand. So I'm not going to tell you if it's this time. But I will tell you how I will restore the kingdom to Israel. You, with the Holy Spirit, being a witness to me. You, with the Holy Spirit, being a witness to me. When you, my bride, are full of my spirit and witness only to me by the power of my spirit, there will be a restoration of all things and I'll return. When you, my bride, you, my son, you, my daughter, you, my child, agree with Jesus and who he is and what I've done by the power of the Holy Spirit, able to give sound to that, See, beloved, you don't have a sound. If you don't have a sound in your own private life, in your own quiet time, in your own drive time on the freeway, what are you talking about? Are you ta- you've got to talk out loud that Jesus is the Christ for me, that Jesus is a glorious Redeemer who has placed me inside of him, and I am accepted in the beloved, and I'm greatly loved by my Father. We have to say to ourselves out loud, it is written, I am loved. And if, and if the, after the it is written, I am loved, begins to shut the voice of the, that which says you are not loved, you're not enough, you're never going to get out of where you are, then you can begin to shift it from talking to the devil by saying it is written to start talking back to the Father in praise and thanksgiving. And tr- beloved, after a while, you just, you just, that one is the way, that's where you live. It is written. It, you are, I am, I am greatly loved. And then you take the scripture to make it into your personal praise and personal experience. You change it into a language that sounds like you. You amplify the Bible yourself. I am greatly loved. I am highly favored. I bring much pleasure to my Father. I am greatly loved. In Christ. Always remember, in Christ. I don't need to get my life fixed from the life I'm living on this planet. It is not my definition of who I am. I need to identify my life in Christ. There's no other life I have. The life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. So I have to express this, and that's the power of the witness. And when the church begins to witness Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, then the restoration of all things will come and Jesus will return. Woo! Meanwhile... We get to practice this with the devil. Do you understand? You're not getting, you're not getting, uh, 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 I mean, we do with each other support one another in the confession of what we're saying. But the devil is working so much over time that he's getting everybody's flesh to be an envy, strife, and division. We think if somebody gets ahead, then that means I'm going behind. So if somebody rises up, we get frightened and we begin to want to pull them down. We're living in a mixed up, messed up, fleshy, carnal, soulish life. And we're trying to get Jesus to come and liberate us from there. And he's saying, you know, I already took care of all these issues. Come back into me. So what if people don't like you? I like you. So what if you're not success? In me, I'm the greatest success. So what if you, life did not go the way you wanted it to do? It didn't go that way for me either. But I overcame. I rose from the dead. I stepped into joy. You can too. And we can disconnect from the demands that our soul places on God to change this, fix this, do that. And from our fleshly needs, it says, I just don't feel loved. And I'm very upset about the way everybody's life is getting better treatment than I. I feel like so unfair and blah, 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 blah. Envy, strife, and division. Whenever it's inside of me, I'm in the flesh. Doesn't matter why, doesn't matter who, doesn't matter what's doing what. I'm in the flesh. If I got envy, if I'm in striving, if I'm dividing. Ha ha, Shabbat. I don't want to be there. Why be there? It's a waste of time. You can't bring things together that are falling apart. But you can step into the one who brought everything together in himself. Here's the good news. I'm preaching now. Ephesians chapter 1 says that we have an inheritance. And Ephesians chapter 1 says that there's the, we know the mystery of his will. And the mystery of his will is that in the fullness of the dispensation of the... You know, well, it first off, it says the mystery of his will is according to his good pleasure which he purposed in himself. So it's not even... He didn't even have a 
connect. He didn't even ask me if I'd like to be a part of this. It was his own decision long before I came around. He just decided it was going to be what he's going to do. So the mystery of his will, which according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the fullness of the dispensation of times, he's going to gather into one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven, which are on earth, in him. Sounds like we're coming into Jesus. Why not just, why not just help it out? Why fight? You know, why fight? Why are we trying to drag the rest of life with us? Let it go. If yesterday is still with you today, it's lasted longer than it was meant to. Yesterday's over. Let it go. If events are still following you in today, they've lasted longer than they were meant to. Forgive them. Release them. Let it go. You say, well, if I just let things go, then I have nothing yet left to hope for to be resolved. Yes, you have everything ahead of you in Jesus. You don't need a resolution of the past. You need a Christ experience, a life. Woohoo, shahababa. <laughs> so, closing. <laughs> closing. Holy Spirit comes. Everybody's alive spirit filled, speaking tongues, telling about the wonderful works of God. Everybody's outside hearing about these things, need, a, need an explanation of what's happening. So, thank God, scripture, Joel preached, said, and there's a reason for what we're doing. The spirit is falling upon all flesh. We're speaking other tongues. We're having visions, having dreams. We're mad. Holy Spirit loves to get into right in the middle of your world, get you connected into God with a little bit of faith in Christ, and then he just says, let me paint a new picture. Let me redefine your reality. Let me say something you haven't heard yet, or if you have, you've never heard it as good as you're about to hear it, because I'm in a, I have a bigger picture, because I am a big God. It's just what he does. That's why prayer is fought over, because if you have a moment like that, you're different the rest of the day. It won't, here's the other, here's the other news. If you prayed yesterday, it doesn't work today. You got to do it today to have the same enjoyment of its effect. It's like if you lit a fire yesterday, it probably not lit today. But you can light it every day and you can have the warmth. So Holy Spirit comes. Now the explanation of, Jesus, of the Holy Spirit comes. And then immediately, immediately, they preach Jesus Christ. They proclaim this Christ. You knew him. He had miracles. You knew he was. Predetermined counsel of God. Handed over to lawless men. It's crucified. But it was impossible for him to be kept in death because death could not hold him. Therefore, he's been raised from the dead. And this may be known that this Christ, this Jesus has been made both Lord and Christ. He's seated at the Father. Now he's poured out the gift that you're hearing. And then they go, what do we do? We're having a repetition. We're having a rebirth. We're going to start birthing the kingdom. You believe on the Lord Jesus, the Spirit of God does it. You believe on the Lord Jesus, you receive the Holy Spirit. And this is a promise to you and your children that is far off up until to this day. <laughs> oh, Holy Spirit. <sighs> the gift that we've been given, the greatest gift, Father wants to give it to us today. There's one baptism, but many fillings because we leak. We leak by, this, by the abuse of this world. We lose our bearing because we lose sight of his word. And we get sucked into the vortex of death and destruction. And, and God is just as pleased with that episode as he is when we're in the highest moment. Because if we can't find our way out of that hole, then we won't be able to hold our place up there. If you can't get out of the hole, you have no authority to, to rescue others. So he allows holes to be dug because he is a resurrector. Yeah. And he redeems and he re resurrects. And, and we have to make that choice. Son, I begot you. Spirit of God, raise him. Faith, I'm hearing you, Daddy. I let go of the issues. I'm not going to carry all that other stuff. It's, it's of uselessness. Every loss was my gain in order to know Christ and know I have no righteousness on my own. So why should I worry about it? The lesson was learned. The lesson was learned. Now I'm knowing Jesus. I want to come into that. Yes, I'm fellowshipping with him in some areas I don't like, but I'm going to looking forward to the, all the stuff I do like. We're going to end in a glory realm. Hallelujah.
So let's stand together. We'll do a prayer. Hashibo hambahe, hata ki bonda he, tu ki shika. Habahe do honda hai ki te kamotsati yondo sheka baha he, shu ka baha se. Hande bota baba. Shibu ka baba. With your own heart and with your mouth, say, I believe you, Lord Jesus. I believe you are my Lord. I call you Lord. Just affirm him. Affirm him in your life. I am in Christ. I am in Christ. Christ is in me. Jesus is Lord. He is my King. Go ahead. Activate faith with your mouth in the word and the promise and the reality in the resurrection. Jesus is Lord. My Lord. Alive in me. Christ my King. I am in Christ. Christ is in the Father. Christ is in me. We are one. We are inseparable. We are born again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I am made in your image. It is written. Shiboba. Shibodada. Shiboko. Now, Father, I receive a fresh baptism of Holy Spirit. I need the power to be lifted out of where I am. I need the power to be lifted up and placed at your right hand inside of Christ. Far above principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named. I receive the power of God to raise me up as a witness to Jesus Christ in assurance, in, in, in practice, in, dis, in the enjoyment. <laughs> Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Why don't we just speak in tongues for a moment, just for the fun of it, just to irritate somebody. <laughs> we are so thankful. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Mm, mm. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. You're not here because you're going to now have to live up to some standard. You're here because Jesus did it all. All we're doing is joining our agreement and faith in Christ, allowing the Spirit of God to make that true. <laughs> receive the Father's blessing. Go ahead. Receive His blessing. The fullness and always in every way He wants to bring it. Now, I'm going to ask some of the men, uh, those who carry the Holy Spirit, fathers in the house, would you, uh, at least like eight of them, eight of you guys go back over by the dance floor, uh, just so that there's a person that can pray for you if you'd like to have a Father's blessing. Go ahead. Peter, you go join them, please. Yeah. And Ed. And um, yeah, Dan. Ken, if you have the moment, love that. Now, we're gonna, we have to shift and go into the prayer for the nations, but I just believe the Lord would affirm you in Christ. And he can do that right where you're standing, and he can do that with the prayer that turns into prophecy so often. So just receive right now the Holy Spirit in this moment to speak words of God the words of the Father if you do not know where to begin begin where Jesus began with Abba and begin with you are my son and you are well pleasing I pleased you are my son if you're in the middle of a, of, of, of a storm then let it be I will never leave you nor forsake you let it be the word let the word come alive that's the Holy Spirit loves the Bible we bless you Jesus I want to release a blessing I want you to receive it I want then you're welcome to go and receive a father's blessing we stand and receive the father's blessing and then we'll go into the nations and I bless everyone online this, these words are for you in the name of Jesus I bless you I bless you with eyes that can see and ears that can hear I bless you with the knowledge of God, our Father, the Father of glory. And you would be given 
a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge, in the full experiential knowledge of God the Father through Jesus Christ. I bless you with the Holy Spirit coming large upon you personally and continually and moving you from the hell hole you find yourself into to the heavenly perspective you can live from. And I call forth an authority to follow you with power into the new realm you're living in. That you will not live in the realm that you are and be kicked out of your place so easily again. You will learn the place that's been given to you in Christ and you'll be kept there by the power of God in a fresh and powerful way. And it will allow others to be recognized that it is the power of God that makes you the witness of Christ that has changed the circumstances in your life and will do so for others. I bless you with this circumst circumstantially. I bless you with this experientially. I bless you with this encounter so that you go forth Go forth. You'll go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit in a new and powerful way in Jesus' name. Amen.